Let me give you a litmus test to see if your woman is worthwhile. This is what you ask her. And this is going to get deep. You heard me? They ain't going to like this, but go through this process anyways. You ain't got to be rude about it. But go through this process with Shorty. Say, hey, love, tell me of one thing that, that you do or have done with excellence. And, and if they like don't know what to say, so you, in the area of education, athletics, or career, like you know, one, one area of life in which you've achieved excellence, generally they're not going to have any answer. Okay, that's going to let you know that she's regular. She's an average person, which there's nothing wrong with being an average person. But here's the thing that I want you guys to pay attention to. They're, they manage to be an average person, but still feel like they're remarkable. <laughs> you know, that's the challenge. You're, that's why most women can't accept an average guy. They can't accept an average guy because they don't realize that they're average. That's why they all want the, the rich guy, the famous guy, the guy flying around the world like James Bond, not realizing that they're average. Now, why do I advise you guys to seek a woman who, ex, who has shown excellence in one of these areas, athletics, education, or career? The reason that I tell you that is because these things show that this woman knows how to be consistent, disciplined, and put in a lot of effort to find distinction. She knows how to be above average, do things with excellence. Now, you might be saying, Marquette, you know, is this against the ism? Like, if she has achieved excellence in her career, isn't this a bad thing? No, it's not. You have to understand the difference between a woman who is highly competent and a woman who is a career woman. You see, a woman who is competent, highly competent, she could be a career woman. It's a choice and she could excel at that. But she could also choose to primarily be a wife or a homemaker or a mother and excel at that. You see, that's a choice. For example, I'm highly competent in boxing. I could choose to be a boxer because I'm highly competent. I can take that as a career, but I choose not to. I choose to dedicate those, that same level of discipline to other pursuits. So you want a woman who is highly competent, and if she's competent in the career area, that means that if you plug her into your business, she's going to be helpful to you. You don't want a career woman. A career woman is a woman who has masculine instincts and ambitions, a career woman is the one who wants to compete with the fellas and be around the fellas. And she's going to go to happy hours and business trips. And she's going to be susceptible to the same things that you and I are susceptible to. huh? So the career woman is a dangerous character. And truth be told, she's never going to be happy. She's not going to be happy herself. And she's not going to make anyone else happy. And God forbid she gets pregnant. She's going to be a detriment to her family and especially to that child. Because what do children need? They need attention. They need attention. They need someone to watch over them and, and love on them. And a career woman can't do that because she is the ultimate narcissist. huh? Now, let's go back. I said, you, you asked that woman, does she, has she ever achieved or displayed or been recognized for excellence in athletics, education, or career? I particularly like when the female has been recognized for excellence in education because the way you thrive in the American or shall we say Western educational system is really to be a, a, a great female. That's how you thrive, which is to say that the educational system from elementary through middle school, high school is all rules based. Can you follow rules consistently and to the T? That's what the educational system is about. Can you follow rules? And if they thrive within the educational system, it lets you as a man know that, yes, baby girl knows how to follow rules and she's smart and consistent. And those are great qualities that she can apply to her life with you. Now, if you fit, if you meet a girl who you know was an average student, oh, it's a red flag. You heard me? You meet a girl who dropped out of college, oh, it's a red flag. <laughs> she can't complete stuff. <laughs> she don't know how to be dedicated. She can't be dedicated to school. Can't be dedicated to you. Pay attention here, huh? The third part is athletics. Now, you have to be careful about this one because the females who excel in athletics, they've, of course, been around uh, a lot of persons who engage in sexually deviant practices, if you know what I mean. And so they may have been exposed to some unfortunate things. 
But generally speaking, the same thing with those who are good with athletics uh, as women, they learn a lot of critical lessons, particularly lessons that enable them to better follow men. And even in female athletics, you find that most of their coaches are still males. You look at a female basketball team, even female volleyball teams, often they'll have male coaches, which is quite comical. But it means that they have been raised up taking orders from men. And most importantly, they've been on a team and teams are hierarchical organizations, which means that she has been taught to respect hierarchy. The actual nature of the female is to believe in equality. I don't want to get too deep, but briefly I'll say when boys are growing up, they grow up using teams, basketball team, baseball team, football team, and there's hierarchy and there's positions. There's a quarterback and different positions. And that's hierarchy. So that's why we respect hierarchy and we can respect when we're not at the top. Women, on the other hand, they or females rather, they don't grow up playing team games. They grow up playing Barbie dolls. There's no hierarchy to buy Barbie dolls. How do you win at Barbie dolls? You don't win at Barbie dolls. It's not a competition. Equality. No one wins because then that would set uh, an asymmetrical relationship and then someone's insecurity is going to get triggered. So that's basically a good thing when the chick has been on a team because she understands a little bit more. So those are the key pieces to being able to screen the female. And when you're screening these females, every now and then you're going to have to kick some of them to the curb, especially if you're a man in a strong position. And when you kick them to the curb, you know, it's almost funny because it's like they they don't comprehend. You know, one thing that I never do is if I can tell a female doesn't recognize my position in this world, you're me showing she can't identify what a boss is. She can't figure out the fact like, you know what? I may never encounter a man like this again in my life. If she doesn't get that feeling when she's dealing with me, I move them to the side. And we had 20 people support with badges. I appreciate all of you. Shout out to the real ones standing up. I get rid of her immediately. And sometimes they're surprised. Like for there was a young lady I pulled up and I said, no, let's hang out. Actually, she had told she had asked me to hang out. She had actually asked me to hang out. And I said, yeah, for sure. Tonight or tomorrow. Listen to me tonight or tomorrow. And she says, oh, well, what about Sunday? No, nah, no, thanks. She said, what? I was like, nah, nah, I don't plan that far out in advance for non-business things, things I'm not being paid to do or required to do. No, nah, no, thank you. And she was like, so what are you, what are you saying? I was, she was like, I'm just busy. I was like, yeah, no, 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 I understand. I understand being busy. I run four corporations. I'm busy too. So I have the utmost respect for you being busy because I run four corporations. I'm busy as well. And because of that, I want to truly thank you for even offering me time to spend with you. I really do appreciate it. But no, I can't schedule that far out for something like this. <laughs> right? Like, you know, we're going to go get some food or have some ice cream, whatever it was. I'm not going to schedule out like that's important. That's not important to me, you know, and more importantly, as a seasoned and experienced businessman, I know for sure that urgency is the greatest indicator of a deal getting closed. Right. So if you're in business and someone's delaying, the deal's not going to get get done. Same thing in romance and in, in dating. If you you know meet a young lady and you invite her out and she wants to like, oh, you know, let's go out next week. You, you're not about to go out with her. She's going to flake. She's going to have an excuse. She's going to be sick. There's going to be all kinds of lies that she'll confront you with. And even if she was telling the truth, it doesn't matter because she's not that interested that she's going to push it out, you know, out way out. Because here's the thing. When someone's interested, they get motivated. I remember when uh, I was a youngster and Chris, it was Christmas time. Do you know how urgent I was about Christmas? Oh man, I couldn't wait for Christmas to happen. It was a big deal to me. My emotions were engaged. So if you have a female that you're dealing with and her emotions are not engaged to the point where she has a level of urgency, then you don't really have anything. And the beautiful feeling of you know telling chick no thank you, it reinforces in your mind your self-worth. And when you truly feel your self-worth as a man, and ideally, gentlemen, you are worth something. You are valuable. When you actually are valuable, you could tell you could tell a beautiful woman like, nah, nah, I, I'm not going to go out with you this weekend. Uh, it's Monday. And I said, we can go out tonight or Tuesday. And you said Sunday. So no, thank you. Now one, <laughs> boy, they're going to go apeshit, man. I promise you. 
They're going to start you know, asking dumb questions. They're going to start double texting you. It's going to boggle their mind because they're trying to reconcile mentally having you on one hand who said, nah, I'm not interested anymore versus the 300 guys on Tinder who are all messaging the same thing. Hey, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing this weekend? Hey, when can we hang out? Hey, do you want to FaceTime? Hey, what's up? Oh, hey, nice to meet you. You're so hot. So there, there's one of you who's saying, no, nah, I'm not interested. And there's 300 of these nerds. And they're now perplexed as to why they can't get you to behave like these nerds over here. huh? So ironically, though you kicked her to the curb and you're never going to let her get back in the game. Now she really wants to get back in the game. You heard me? And what's more, she's going to be talking about you. Oh, believe that. Yeah, believe that. She's going to be talking greasy about you to her mother, to her girlfriends, all that. But there's going to be embedded in that a level of respect. And if she is to deal with you again in the future, she's going to have a level of respect to where uh, someone sends a question. <laughs> what does it mean if, you're, if a girl you're dating doesn't take photos with you and doesn't randomly call you? I'm going to answer that right now. So if a girl does not take photos with you and that's her nature, you know, she's not one who takes photos in general, so be it. That makes perfect sense. If you have a girl who takes photos on a regular basis, she's taking photos of herself, posting them or taking photos of herself and DMing them to you on a regular basis, that means that at some level she believes she's photogenic and for some reason she likes capturing moments and memories but not with you in them. Shout out to Alex. He just bought a badge. So that should tell you something. And I'll give you another indication of this because, you know, I, I get a diversity of experience. Like, for example, earlier today, I was just getting my workout in. Curious things. One, a guy had walked up and he was like, hey, hey, I'm a photographer. Can I take some photos of you while you're working? I said, you don't have to do anything different. I just want to take some photos. So I was like, Carry on, bro. I was like, bro, I'm going to be working out here regardless, man. You want to take some photos? Take some photos. Finished my workout. He came up to me. He was like, yeah, I'm, I actually work for the newspaper. And so we can always use photos like this. And the light was looking good. So, you know, nothing weird. I got a wife and, and kids. I, I just, we can use these you know, for the newspaper. I was like, oh, that's dope, man. I love to be in the Polish newspaper. But what I noticed was while the guy was taking photos, there were two girls who had came outside of the coffee shop. They actually worked at the coffee shop. And then when the photographer started taking photos, they were recording and taking photos on their phone as well. This has happened a ton of times that chicks will just be taking photos of me or sometimes they'll like ask if they can be in a photo with me. And whether it's I'm exercising or sometimes they just like the drip. They're like, whoa, that outfit is crazy. That, sh that jacket is crazy. Can we take a pic? It is to express to you that the nature of human beings is when they experience something remarkable or someone memorable or someone that's special or has meaning to them. They want to take a photo. So it would be absolutely atypical behavior if your lady does not want to take a photo with you in it. So, yes, I, I would be curious about that. Absolutely. I, I think that's something to be suspicious of. When you say she doesn't randomly call you, you know, some things you should be thankful for. You dig? And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're living your life in the right way and your life is rich with good things, if she doesn't call you, it might be a blessing, you heard me? Because when you're really living life in the correct way, you are in demand. You know, I, I got so many DMs that I haven't opened and, and you know, I, I just may never get to. I have emails that I've not opened, I may never get to. I got text messages I have not opened, I may never get to. When you're living life the right way, you'll be in demand. So right now, be thankful that she's not just another person asking for your time because your time is highly valued. And more importantly, if you're living life in a more natural way, and that's what we have to get back to, you know, your time away should be your time away. You know, if you go out with your girl on Monday, you know, you guys meet up, have lunch, and then you drop her off at 7 p.m., it's okay if she doesn't say anything to you until she's going to bed. She just give you a good night text. You know, the the constant contact thing that is, you know, you might have been raised in the porn generation or the generation that was raised by iPads. But either way, this is not a good way of living and you saturate the market, so to speak. You 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 give her too much of you, which makes it easier for her to get tired of you. Scarcity is much better, which is to say in the courting process, when you first meet the girl, you got to hunt her down. You got to pursue her. The moment she becomes yours, the dynamic changes and forevermore she should pursue you. Huh? 
And let's be real here. Over time, we find that the, the male is the one that has greater value. And uh, I don't say that to be rude or impolite. I just say that in as much as if you look at the science on menopause, for example, the female is going to invariably, inevitably go through menopause. It's going to affect her body. It's going to affect her ability to want and deliver sex. It's going to even affect her brain. There are brain scans on premenopausal women, women during and post menopause, and they're a different person. So the male is staying fairly consistent over time, which is to say you're maintaining the value you've always had. You know, I think starting at age 35 or like in your mid to late 30s, you lose like 1% testosterone you know, yearly, which is not the kind of radical change that women experience with uh, menopause, which is to say that men are retaining their value better. And so, yes, yeah, she should be pursuing you, especially because you don't have to get pregnant and you know, have your body destroyed. When a woman gets pregnant, her body's destroyed. Now she really needs to stick to that man that got her pregnant because other men are going to be less interested in her. Conversely, if I go out tonight and get 30,000 of these beautiful Polish women pregnant, I'm going to look exactly the same. I might probably even look more fit, you hear me, because I was putting in that work. So I'll probably look better anyways, you dig?